My name's Tim Campbell, Board Advisor to Humanic, and we're here with another fantastic interview. I'm really honoured to be joined by the one, the only, Thomas Power, who is not only a board member, entrepreneur, but he's also going to tell us some secrets about the future of blockchain. Thomas, how are you? Very well, Tim. Uh, Listen, thank pleasure. you so much for coming along. It's been a little while since we've had a conversation, and it's really great to have you here as part of the Humanic Faces series. So, just for the people who haven't heard of you, I don't know who that is, but tell us about what you've been up to for the last couple of years. I've been working in New Zealand mm -hmm. for a startup that began in 2011 yep. called Nine Spokes, yep. as in nine. nine. <laughs> Uh, they started in 2011, they invited me onto their board in 2014 and I've been building up their social media, their Twitter, their LinkedIn, their Facebook. Yep. And what, what um, do they do? They've built a business to business app store for banks. Oh wow, okay. To white label. Yep. And their first deal in the UK is with Barclays, it's an exclusive deal. Small little bank then? Small little bank. Um, amazing uh, Kiwis behind this company, mm -hmm. Adrian and Mark. Yep. Amazing, who I've known a long, long time. Yep. Um, and they're now spreading across the world. They did a listing on the Australian Stock Exchange June the 9th last year. Yep. And uh, I think they're, uh, they're an embryo who are on there finding their path. Fantastic. So yeah. this is part of who you are now. You, you lend your expertise to lots of fledgling businesses who are at that stage where we're going to grow and go forward. But what gives you the context to do that? Because you're obviously a successful entrepreneur in your own right. What's the context? Well, really who I was trained by, um, back in 1986, I joined our, I guess our collective fellow old boss. Indeed. Um, I, was, uh, I was working with uh, Malcolm Miller mm -hmm. and uh, Alan as he was then, mm -hmm. before he was even Sir Alan. Now Lord Sugar. Now Lord Sugar. Um, and uh, he was a great coach, mentor, guide, brutal teacher, but he, he trained you hard. And if you, if you listen and you absorb 30 years later, you end up on lots of boards as a board member. And so you, you're, you're the original apprentice? That would be generous because <laughs> there were lots of young kids like me working for uh, Alan back mm. in... Uh, back in the, the mid 80s. Mm. Um, and th there is an annual dinner where you get together yep. with Nick uh, and, Bar and everyone, Malcolm and Keith, yep. and uh, for a sort of a, you know, a good old days chin wag. Mm. And we always love to talk to Nick about that, those funny shows he's on now, the, you know, the, <laughs> the countdowns shows. and stuff. <laughs> but it was, a, it, it was very special days because we, you know, we met, we met the guys at Microsoft mm. Uh, Bill Gates and Steve Barmer when they were inventing Windows. We, we met Michael Dell mm. as he was just bringing what was PCs Limited to the UK in 1987. We didn't know these guys were going to be billionaires. In those days, Alan was the biggest guy in town. Yeah, And you, you, you must have taken on board some of that learning and now applying it to what you've done yourself. What was your, what's your most successful company? Well, I mean... I, just answering the first part of that, I would say the, the, thing, the thing that I, I do admire and I still love about Alan is, uh, or Lord Sugar, is, uh, is his desire for research. Mm, mm. And I was always scouting around for him, looking for stuff. Yeah. And 30 years later, I'm still doing that. I guess I'm like an internet scout now. Mm. Uh, supporting executives, board members to be, you know, to get to the next level. Yeah. And I learned that from him because he's obsessed with research and detail. He is. And I would say that's what I absorbed because I still do that now. And the internet's just speeded it up. In answer to your question about uh, the most successful, I joined the board of QXL Ricardo in mm. 2002. Quick Cell, yep. uh, started by Tim Jackson yep. in, the, in the 96 time, I want to say. And I left that board in 2006, in 2007, that they sold for uh, just under a billion pounds. Mm -hmm. So I, I was a contributor to some of that value. So I would say that was the most successful of my career. So you're a bit of an alchemist. I'm a good teacher. You know, I do a lot of scouting. I go to a lot of conferences. I sit on an aeroplane. I listen very carefully. I'm very active on Twitter. I'm very good at joining the dots and saying, if you take this and this and this, and I'm good at looking at the weak signals around mm. the edge, mm. you know, AI, blockchain, initial coin offering, yep. and seeing how they're going to affect a business. 
whether it be a new co or resurrecting an old co, mm -hmm. which ICOs might be used to resurrect old co's. There's a lot of, there's a lot of zombie companies yeah. that have raised 20 to 50 million that aren't going anywhere. And they need renewing and resurrecting, and the ICO could be for them. Mm -hmm. I also think the, uh, the arrival of the initial coin offering is very like dot com. Mm -hmm. And if you go back to, uh, if you think about the history, you've got uh, World Wide Web 1989, yep. Bitcoin 2009, you've got Ethereum 2014, 2015, you've got Netscape 1994, 95. <laughs> yeah. And if you, look at, if you look at what's happening, 1997.com, is 2017 mm -hmm. ICO, mm -hmm. and so you can follow you can follow the dates. The FTSE 100 peaked December the 31st, 1999, mm -hmm. 6930. Yeah, the market crashed in March 2000 after Brent and Martha did the last minute yes, dot com uh, yeah, yeah. IPO. Yeah. Uh, the Academy IPO was cancelled. It was just after that. Just one, after that, wasn't which it? Which is yeah. very painful for Penny and I. <laughs> Um, so you can see a peak on ICO, but the difference now we didn't have we didn't have four or five IPOs a day mm. in 1997. Mm -hmm. We've got three or four ICOs a day now. A lot of them are dirty, scammy, naughty, horrible. But I know in all markets, 99% will fail. The thing is, if if there are if there are 10,000 ICOs between now and that yep. that correction in 2020, 2021. 1% is 100 new codes. Mm. And it's who sits on the boards of those 100 new codes. And also, what are, the, what are the problems they're trying to solve? And because what are the problems they're trying to solve? I think the, 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 the initial focus, pun intended, has been on how much money can be generated from there. There's a lot of noise about how much money can be, and that's fantastic. But, but it looks like a Ponzi. Exactly. It looks think, dirty. But I think if people then focus on the good that you'll go, so you mentioned your New Zealand company, the first thing that you articulated was the value that it's adding. Yeah. And I think if people focus on the value, it's adding, is that not got to be the future of what's going to be more successful? Yeah, I would say so. But the thing is, when people are driven by either fear or greed, what you've got with the initial coin offering, Ethereum, Bitcoin, is the fear is the fear of missing out, mm -hmm. FOMO, FOMO, as they like to call it. Oh, very cool, you see? You see? <laughs> um, and the greed of, oh shit, we can make lots of money out Correct. of this thing. Correct. Well, you don't want either of those things, really. To drive you. You don't. Because if you think about initial coin offering, really, and go back to dot com, it's really initial club offering. And Humanique has now got members of its club. Mm -hmm. They bought into its ICO, but they became a member of the Humanique club. Yep. So it's really initial club offering, and you contribute your capital through your coin, through your Ethereum or your Bitcoin, and then you become a member. Mm. So I think with all the ICOs, are they, are they club coins mm. or are they asset coins? Mm. Is it an asset-backed platform yep. or are you joining a membership to be a zealot to communicate the message of that coin? Um, well, I think there's concerns. If, if you have the asset element, there's obviously the the vision around the regulators and what they're going to do in terms of the change for the future. And they've got to come in. They have to. It's going to come. It's inevitable. Yeah. Um, but then I suppose if you focus on the utility element of the coin, that may help the business be more successful in the long run, going back, I suppose, to what's the value the organisation is adding. Um, I think when lots of people look at the white papers, they sometimes just flip to the, the number section and forgetting all the bits in there. That, that's, that's, that's probably the, the emphasis around the boom of what's happening at the moment. Thing is, if there are if there are so many, how do you pick the winners? You tell us. You're the research man. How do you pick the winners? Well, yeah. if you go back to dot com, mm -hmm. and you go back to ninety seven, that was the year Amazon IPO'd. Okay, so if you come forward, if you'd put ten thousand dollars into Amazon back then, it'd probably worth a million dollars. Yep, maybe more. But how could you have known that? Yep, because it was always rubbished. Amazon as a loss making mail order company. Mm. Bear in mind, in 97, we didn't have Google or Facebook at all then. And so if you roll forward 20 years, the only ones we really, truly remember are Google, Amazon and Facebook. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones people use every day. The rest are there, but they're not at that level. I mean, they're, they're, they're behemoths. They're monsters, those three. They're 10 times the size of BlackBerry and Nokia at their yeah. peak. Yeah. You've got to find some way to run an ICO index, an ICO fund, so you can buy into the average. 
That's what will attract the big investors. That will attract the regulator. Mm. And when will that occur? It's got to come in the next 18 months. So do you, do you, do you see ICOs, the initial coin offerings, as good or bad things? Uh, both. In what way? The thing, about, the thing that I like about ICO is it's kind of making money open source. Okay, yeah. A lot of um, investors in Bitcoin and Ethereum have made a lot of capital gain, but they don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So they, f I guess many of them feel privileged to have it. And so it would make sense to put 1% into all 10,000 ICOs yeah. and spread the risk. Yeah. The th other thing I like about ICOs is it's, it's made the VCs think, oh, we've got a competitor. <laughs> They've got a competitor. The VCs are actually being disrupted. Mm. High net worth people are being disrupted. Family offices. Family offices are being disrupted. And I think traditionally capital is held by the wealthy. Family offices, venture capital, mm. private equity, the banks. Mm -hmm. The people who can't access that capital are all the geeks who've had 10 years of smartphones <laughs> coming out of university with a computer science uh, degree but can't access those networks. Yep. And the ICO is for them but to give birth to their new co. So I see that as very positive. But I suppose it's still therefore creating a bit of an apartheid where you've got those who are in the know around what blockchain and ICOs actually are, and there's not very many of those. I suppose most of your the parties you'll go to, you'll mention it, people are like, okay, yeah, but over their heads. Oh yeah, it's super, super tiny, tiny niche. It's, it's 96, 97. And then how do you get the value of the potential open of wealth creation for many? Because anybody can make a wallet, start investing if they really want to. How do we spread that out to the many? Or should we spread that out to the many? Or should we wait for the regulator? Uh, well, I've got lots of answers for that. Um, when I, when I, you know, Penny wants to build the business cafe and yep. open business cafes on every high street. This is this world. the other half of the dynamic duo. This is the other half. Yep. I mean, we're fifty-three. We're hardly the dynamic duo. Uh, you're, you're, you're still you're still doing bits, as they say. <laughs> um, I I see the business cafe as not just a place where you go and learn how to get your digital skills, yep. help you with your mental health, sort out your SaaS, use the Nine Spokes App Store yep. or the Google or whatever is the SaaS application. I see it as also the place you go in to use the Bitcoin ATM mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. the Ethereum ATM. Yep. I, I see it as the place where you go to learn how to open a wallet and buy a coin. Yep. I see it as a place where almost you're taught how to buy a coin. Like, like in the 1980s, we had the share mm. shop. Mm. And you went and you bought a share, because yep. you didn't know how to buy a share in British Gas, Telsid, or yep. BT. Yep. You didn't know how to buy a share. Mm. You had to be taught. Mm -hmm. And I see the Business Cafe as the place where you go and learn how to buy a share in an ICO. A much needed resource. At the moment. A retail experience, mm. where because people trust retail. You know, they, um, but over a coffee. Yeah. Right, so it's kind of uh, it's kind of tech on the high street, but it's got a financial benefit, uh, a learning benefit, and also a sort of uh, we'll take care of you benefit. Yeah, right? the mental health side. I, I I see that as the future of digital money, mm. and I see that as the future of SaaS on the high street. I I, I think there'll be tens of thousands of business cafes. Yeah, and I, I think Penny will be uh, wildly successful with that. The, the downside of where we are right now is ICO, Bitcoin, blockchain, it's got an association with uh, corruption, crime, mm. weapons, prostitution, mm. slavery, dirt, mm. uh, dirtiness. Lots of horrible stuff in Asia and Africa. And I, I mean, maybe all markets have to be cleaned up through volume. Yep. Um, but I just think it's caught between this devil and the deep blue sea right now where I better avoid it because, mm. and I think somehow it's got to be legitimised either by the regulator yep. or by the presence of a brand, a major the brand. The credibility to actually associate Yeah, it could be an old co-brand or yep. it could be a new co-brand, but, but people like brands. They do. And they want a platform and a place to go, ideally on the high street, but initially online, on their, on their mobiles, where they can go and learn all this stuff. Mm. And no brand is stepping forward. 
should it come from Ernst & Young, KPMG, PwC, the auditors? Should it come from a bank? Mm. Um, should it come from a from a, a Tesco or a, uh, because what what happens when Amazon, Google, and Facebook launch their coin? Correct. Facecoin, mm -hmm. Googecoin, Amacoin, Amazoin. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to become monsters. Correct. That's going to become the the, <coughs> the the marketplace of trade between all these users. The, the other players could be decimated if they mm. don't respond, if they don't move quickly. And even the regulators and the governments can't deal with Google, Amazon and Facebook. No, they're, they're, they're bigger than they, they are. are. Exactly. They've got. But then, so it's a really challenging time now, Tim, then, because what, it's what hard to give then? a map on yeah. a complex world. But then what brings you to the world of blockchain and what, what excites I'm you? I'm always about? at the front. Yeah, but why? You don't have to be. You're, you're, you're very successful. You've done the business growth. You've sat on a number of boards. I'm always on the edge. I'm always at the front. You're I out playing tennis. Front. You're doing all the cool I stuff. I play my tennis. <laughs> I do my swimming. But I, 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 my mind is driven by being on the front line. So what excites you about the front line of, of blockchain then? What, what is it that excites you? I guess really, if you think about your identity as Tim. Yep. You're famous, you're successful, you're well known. Infamous. <laughs> Infamous. <laughs> created really by your success on the on the show, yep. which was what, 05, 06? 05. 05. 05. Yeah. So it's like 12 years ago. Yep. And now your identity is held on, on video like this, podcasts. Your identity is on, on Twitter, yep. or on Facebook, on blockchain. You've got your passport, you've got your driving license, yep. you've got your bank accounts. Your identity is spread. Yep. You can't capture Tim Campbell in a handle, mm -hmm. a Tim Campbell handle, mm -hmm. that you can then decide who you share it with, mm -hmm. who you publish your identity to. Mm -hmm. I might publish this to a bank, I might give this to Experian, I might give that to the DVLA, I might yep. give this to the passport, I'll give that to Google. You can't do that. The idea of you managing your data in a single handle on the blockchain that's really significant. Mm. So is is because the power of the data has gone to Google, Amazon, and Facebook. Correct. What is all that's happening is their shareholders are benefiting from our data. Yeah. And what's our payment? Well, their, our payment is a free service from them. Mm -hmm. But that's not good enough. Not now. Not now. So is is blockchain the the ability to really take control or monetize in a way? the growth of big data that lots of people haven't been able yes. to really get their heads around. Yes. But not just your not just your social media data, that's one lump of data. You've got your health data. Mm -hmm. You've got your uh, uh, education data, any mm -hmm. certificates. You've got your um, uh, driving license mm -hmm. data, your passport data. Massive amounts of data that you can't manage in one place and share mm. and choose where you publish mm. because you might be able to get better rates with your health company as a result of your driving data or your David Lloyd data for your tennis and swimming. Who yep. knows? Yep. But you can't do that. Yet. Yet. Now, logic says when you think it through, you think, oh, well, Google, Amazon and Facebook are going to nick it all again. They're going to dominate it again. But I think the old co's and the governments are, are going to wake up and yeah. say we've got a role to play here because it should be, it should be shared out. It should be a bigger ecosystem. It should all be on the high street to learn it all. And so I hope it's not dominated by three players again. It's, it's quite interesting because, because I, I want I'm, the I want the capital to go to the people who correct. run the run the mm. elements of it. And I, I'm, I I share that frustration. ICO is like a digital kibbutz, correct? Like a digital co-op. But then for everyone to get into the same house and share the food and make sure it all goes yeah. around, th there has to be the knowledge bit, the research bit that you emphasise at the very beginning of our conversation, being sucked up by everybody else. And unfortunately, I think you look at insurance, for example, big movements in, in the insure tech industry at the moment, yeah. um, very old, antiquated industry, uh, ripe for disruption. You, you have the advent of blockchain combining with big data, lots of small players now being able to offer out different elements. So for example, we know a, a guy who's selling hundreds of thousands of travel insurance documents to individuals just from his bedroom because he can do that nice. now with the technology at the moment. Amazing, amazing. And you've got the big companies, the big insurers, and then the reinsurers and everybody else, the brokers, all the waste that's in that chain not being able to move quickly enough. So actually, the disruption from the little players is actually bringing new products and services to market. That's got to be a good thing, though. No? 
It has, but those new players have to have capital. I see. And if old co doesn't fund the new co, yep. then they have to go somewhere else, which is ICO. And is that, for me, is the positive element. That, to me, is huge because my big... When Penny and I got into Internet 94, we were introduced by Jazz Ahmed, who yeah. runs AKQA. Yeah. He, 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 a jazz woke us up to it in, in the spring of 94. We thought it, it would be like a, uh, a, a business Black commerce yeah. for everyone. Um, there's a billion organisations in the world. There's seven or eight billion people in the world. We thought it would be for everyone. Mm. 25 years later, you've got three players who own it all. And I know there's lots of other players, mm. but you've got three monsters. Mm. One of which has organised all the data, all mm. the information Google. One of which has organised all the people in Facebook. And one of which has organised all the products. In, in mm. Amazon. They've done a great job. They're fantastic companies. Mm. They're brilliantly run. They mm. have fantastic board members. Mm. I know some of them. Um, but I, I personally want to see, I want to see a billion organisations involved and seven or eight billion people involved in trading on the internet. Yep. And I think the blockchain is that map. That potential. But in India and China have huge companies coming around the corner in terms of doing stuff. Alipay, for example, and others. Well, they have the same situation in China that, mm -hmm. that they have in the United States. But, they've, but remember, they've blocked out Google and, and Facebook, yep. really, haven't they, to, yep. to, to, to strengthen their, 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 their... But it's still not right to have dominant players. But isn't that inev inevitable? I d <laughs> Is this utopia of yours actually a possibility? Maybe not. Maybe not. But I, 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 I prefer more of a... I prefer more of a shared out economic. Mm. I don't, I, 25 years of internet, massive gaps between wealth and poverty. Yep. If, if, you, if you want to eliminate, if you want to eliminate crime, if you want to eliminate terrorism, if you want to get rid of pain, you've got to, you've got to make everybody the same. I agree. In terms yeah. of, not necessarily the same no, uh, no. wealth state, but yep. the same, You've got to remove the pain, yep. and you can only remove the pain by creating wealth, and you can only achieve that if that wealth is moved to every individual. And everyone has the opportunity to participate. And everyone has the opportunity to participate. They have to have motive and desire to participate. But I think when you see, when you see what's coming out, we've had 10 years of the smartphone now, mm -hmm. haven't we? It's, it's changed a lot of our lives. We, we live in it. You see people stumbling over the pavement, yep. tripping over yep. them. <laughs> It's time for all those individuals to be set free. Mm. And, uh, and the ICO on the blockchain, to me, sets the world free. Mm. And if it all ends up with Amazon, Google and Facebook equivalents Sad. again, I think, it's, I think it's, it's great for those shareholders. Of course. But I would love to see 8 billion people working. Mm. I would love to see the poverty gone, the terrorism gone. And it, it can only go when the brands step up and, and give their capital to, to everybody. Mm. But they need a vehicle, because they need a transaction vehicle. And Correct. that transaction vehicle is the ICO on the blockchain. Yeah. And, that's what and we've old seen, co yeah. can invest in new co. Correct. And that's what we've seen at Humanic, with our vision around eradicating poverty from the two billion who are currently unbanked. Um, that was the driver there. But once again, it's underpinned by a clear utility. There's an aim and that's ambition. That's the only way to get rid of the terrorism. Mm. It's the only way. Empowering communities to do so. so Thomas, yes. what's the future look like? Put your research head on, your, your executive position sitting on the board. What does the future look like? And what should people be thinking about now? Certainly people should be studying the blockchain in a lot of depth. Okay. A lot of depth. At board level, at student level, at school level, they should be studying it. Um, they should be thinking about AI, artificial intelligence, yep. what it means. They should be thinking about the internet of things. They should mm. be learning all of these products. Yep these platforms. They should also be buying coin. They should be buying some Bitcoin, some Ethereum, some Litecoin, some Doggy coin, whatever it might be. They or should a be portion of Bitcoin. Or a little <laughs> portion. But they should be buying some so they can see the user experience right now is poor. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's complicated. Mm -hmm. And that's got to become easy. They should be thinking about that. So they should then be thinking about how their idea, their dreams, can be turned into a, into a plan, into a into an ICO paper, into a into a team, into a new cup. Yep. 
Um, and then I think they should be preparing for what I see in the 2020s, because I've got this theory about Mark Zuckerberg becoming President of the United States after Trump. Wow. I've That's got, a prediction and a half. Um, uh, you know, I bet. I bet I'm glad that's I'm I'm I'm, Yeah, I'm glad that's William Hill. Everybody <laughs> I was tweeting on t- about Trump for 18 months, everyone says it's nonsense, not anyone. Did you put a bet on? I did. Look at you. Yeah, Where's my I, phone call? I had a good bet, I had a good <laughs> bet on Trump. Um, because he dominated social media. Correct. And yeah. uh, the winner of the game is the one with all the names. Yeah. As, as was Obama, same uh, way. Same way. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I kind of think. In, in product terms, Internet of Things, blockchain, big data, AI, IC, you've got to learn all of those things mm-hmm. anyway. That's the future. But that's, that's not enough. You've, you've got to understand this new tokenized world, that capital markets are becoming tokens. Mm. Fiat currency is going to change. Fiat currency is going to change. The ICO is the birth of new co's, and maybe the ICO is the birth of a new co for an old co to then support. So old co supports new co through ICO, Mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I think controversially, I think Mark at Facebook potentially is going to give Facebook to the American people. Wow. Turn it into a foundation. Put Cheryl in as CEO. Yep. And say, I've given you Facebook. We can now do electoral voting on your thumb, on your phone. Yep. Make me president of the United States. I wonder if you'll have the twins as in his vice cabinet. But anyway, that's not... <laughs> you know, weirder things have happened, haven't they? Weirder that's, things have happened. That's quite possible. <laughs> um, and what, what about you? What's, what's, in the, what's in the plan for you? What's, what's next? I know you sit on a number of boards now, um, of some in, incredibly exciting companies. Um, is that more the same for the future? Or is there something else? More tennis? What, what, what's the next day for you? Well, hopefully more tennis, hopefully more boards. Mm. Um, I guess I, I guess I want to make the I want to take the uh, the blockchain and the ICO and make it mainstream. Okay. Democratize it. Yeah, make it make it for everyone because it, it took a long time going back to ninety seven or that ninety four time. It took a long time to understand the browser. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, everyone's going to be doing porn and gambling. Yeah. Um, and that it struggled with that for a few years, and then it was e commerce and e business. Mm-hmm. And that's all crap, and Amazon are losing money, and that's all rubbish. And we had we had like seven years of this stuff. Yeah, waste of time. Yeah. Waste of time. Twenty years later, everyone's on their smartphones all the time. We're now shifting to another, to al- almost like the whole thing all over again mm. on mobile. But the capital is moved to the people. Mm. Is is helping all all of that move down onto the high street in the business cafe. Uh, using platforms like Nine Spokes and all yeah. the others inside inside yeah. the store, but but kind of putting the internet on the high street for everyone over a coffee. Well, I love that. Well, that that's a vision for the future. And and inside inside that cafe, you've got your Bitcoin ATM, mm. your Ethereum ATM. Mm. You've got you can learn about ICO. You can invest in a coin. You can sit in a SaaS seminar. Yeah. You can learn how to make your phone better. Do all your account. Just make it all. Friendly on the high street mm. over a coffee. I love because it. Because it, it's, it's all too complicated. Well, if, if you're... And this world of living on smartphones and living in the cloud, mm. I don't believe it. No? People... The high streets are surviving with hairdressers, coffee shops, uh, shoe shops, and, and estate agents. They're mm. still there. Mm. And look at the coffee shops in every... There must be 20 or 30 coffee shops in every town. People want coffee... But you don't have permission to engage in a coffee shop, mm. whether it's be Costa or Nero or people want permission, I think, permission to engage and learn and buy, buy. and network. And I'd like the Business Cafe to be the home of networking. Mm. Well, so that when I pass, that institution that is left behind. Well, because that's what Penny and I started off twenty years ago. Well let's hope um, you get my mum down to a a little cafe to have a conversation where she can buy a coffee with her Bitcoin, that will be the key. Um, Perfect. Thomas, listen, you, you not only have you talked to us and educated us about the, what, the potential of the future, you've scared a couple of VCs into thinking what they need to do and also shared the power of getting the information right. It's been amazing to catch up with you again. Hopefully we can catch up when the cafe comes as well and you launch another company. Will you come back and have another conversation? Absolutely. Thank you for inviting me, Tim. Lovely. Thank you. Good to see you. Pleasure. Thank you.